Saturn Grod Productions presents a roundtable discussion with Gregory Peck and Freighteress H on their new movie, on their new movie, Freighteress, the uh, Freighter vs. Retro, the Motion Picture 2, also known as the Final Freighter. Well, Freighter, we haven't had a long talk in a long time. And, uh, you know, you've recently, we've gone through recently a lot of filming, a lot of work on this new movie, and so, how you feeling? How you doing? I'm um, feeling, doing, feeling really good. Um, I really have to start, though, talking about what led to this. I mean, are you afraid or, uh, hey, there's a long ways we can go with this conversation. I mean, this can be a long talk. Uh, maybe we should talk about how it began, I mean, for the folks at home. Yeah, I mean, we kind of struggle. <laughs> I know, we, as like I said, I, I, I think we do this because it's, it's special in our own hearts. <laughs> it's all special in our own hearts. But, uh, but I, I usually... I, like I said, though, with the algorithm on YouTube, you know, and that's another thing, you know, we're on YouTube, and, uh, you know, we were always about alternative platforms, and, f you know, maybe we should kind of talk about that, too, and, well, what happened was, originally, we started on Blip TV, you know, and a lot of people don't remember Blip TV, <laughs> the, you, you see, the thing you need to understand about the way the internet works is, when something comes along, see, the way I like to say it is, you know, you have, what did it feels like? And this is generally the way it feels like. And there's Twitter, there's Facebook, you know, they talk about meta now. And it, it, it's not that, that I don't, I, I think it's going to be really hard for Zucker to even just replace Facebook. It, it, I don't think it's going to happen. I think he's just doing that to just get, gain some new attention because he, he got so much uh, controversy But about his, his platform. But the point I was trying to say is, generally when you ask someone, what, what are the four things off the top of your head that you think of the internet? Or five things. You know, someone will say Netflix, they'll say YouTube, they'll say Twitter, they'll say uh, Facebook you know, Snapchat, or, uh, well, I don't know, do, do, do they really talk about Snapchat anymore like they used to? I, I think that's been kind of fading. Mainly it's because, I, like I said, most of these people usually are in Facebook. But then, of course, you have YouTube. And it's, you know, so it's really hard. But a long time ago, a long time ago, the lines were so blurred because no one was really sure, as far as the internet, what was going to pop up and what was going to replace what. You know, th there were things like MySpace and or such platforms that were strong. And, you know, and I, I really think MySpace could have been Facebook, but for some reason, it just didn't quite. Let's be honest. I think it's because Facebook pretty much has a kind of a military backing with it they don't talk about it and anything it does you know you know you know we talk about google and it's 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 always it's, it's got this backing so what it is is with these these older platforms you know like blip you know nobody talk when when a platform would die i mean it's dead nobody you don't you don't see someone like doing a uh, a memorial service for Vidme. Oh, oh, freight, uh, our freighter! It is dead. It is so dead. Uh, you know, it is so dead. Yeah, it's, it's it's a very dead platform. So yeah, so what happened was, you know, and I think you know my my memory is very sketchy on it. So. So, but the thing is, you, you, we're doing the movie, but we're doing also kind of a new show on top of it. It's, yeah, it, but see, the, this discussion, you know, uh, we got to kind of work on the slope because there's a lot to talk about. 
because there's a lot of obstacle courses that led to this. The reality is, is the reality is, is I, I really actually do enjoy doing this. I do too, Freyer, you know, and it's it's really a lot of fun. I like games, but I will flat out tell you, new games, the systems are powerful as a, a high-end PC, but the games are just not there. Freighter, many of them are really busted and broke when they come out, and it looks bad. And the, and the people who do it, they just have the attitude, well, we'll just patch it as we go. Well, why, where did this ever come from? And, you know, and it really it started during the 360 days. You know, there was games coming out that were kind of busted. But it's because what it was is because games had a online service. They had constant patches that can be brought to them. Where in the old days, like in the NES days, and stuff, you, you, you had to do it right. You had to do it right the first time. There was no second time. In fact, probably that's what, what reason why sometimes a sequel came out is because maybe the, the the first game was a little janky, and so they had a that they gave them an incentive with the next game to really add some um, detail to it. But like uh, I, I, we, our conversation's all over the place right now, and it's because we're trying to figure out a way to properly explain uh, this thing and where it began and, and its problems. So, you know, Blip TV, and there's a theme here because we 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 start on Blip because generally we notice that, you know, Channel Awesome, you know, Spoony, Nostalgia Critic, um, even Angry Joe, um, who was that other one? Um, Linker? Yeah, these guys pretty much could do whatever they wanted. They could swear. They can. They they can do any kind of content. YouTube. There's a general attitude that there seems to be a golden era of YouTube, and YouTube has gone back and forth and back and forth. It's had times where it's the greatest freedom of speech platform and have been the most authoritarian, <laughs> authoritarian, censor heavy. You're not sure when you're going to get a guy line strike. I mean. And there seems to be times where all of a sudden they'll get super strict with copyright and then all of a sudden it just it just like cools off for a while and then it gets strict again and and then you you, you get some then you get the government making some kind of f new new bill and and it frightens everyone and it shakes everyone in the core and we're all going to go to prison if we make a, another video and then basically the, the new year comes around and nothing happens you know everyone's back to making videos again and it's kind of like there was that whole soap off thing, wasn't it? There's was all kinds of programs. There was ones mainly is because, you know, you would have someone that would make abusive videos. They would like take Disney princesses and put them in like bad positions, and you know, and you know, you know, basically kids were seeing these things because the, the hey hey it's it's got Elsa, hey it's got Spider Man, hey it's got something, and it created an apocalypse point i was trying to say is we've been jumping platforms so we got a history of jumping platforms um so blip tv we did for the freighter versus retro uh blip tv died we kind of moved things to youtube for a little bit and at at the time like you need to understand i was burnt out with the freighter sh night show by, by the way, you brought the show back. It's a, it's on every night now. Yeah, well, see what happened with me is, you know, back then, you know, I was still working every night, you know, and stuff. I still had to work jobs. I invested in cryptocurrency. My investments worked out, and I'm basically, between that and my bookstore, I'm self-employed. And as a result now, I don't have to go to a job. I can now do Saturday Rail Productions 100%. And yes, I hate to say it, I do it on YouTube because, because I'm going to explain other platforms. And, you know, but back to what happened was, you know, you know the Freighter Night Show I got burned out on, I did Freighter vs. Retro because I really wanted to just dive into a hobby. 
you know, because I was getting into this stuff that was so serious, you know, you know, I was getting into some stuff, you know, wasn't very Christian. And so it just took me years to eventually heal up. And then all of a sudden I noticed that years later, there was this platform that popped up as an alternative. And I like alternative platforms to YouTube. They all failed, though, because in the reality is, is because it's not a freedom of speech platform. It's someone else's private property. Yeah, yeah, I remember you always used to say that. You always used to say that. Just remember, though, it's someone's private property and that uh, it's someone else's private property. Meaning is that you can basically find yourself on someone's property, but if you do something they don't like, they can trespass you. They can tell you to leave the property or they'll call the police and, and then you get a trespass. And if you ever come back on the property, you're arrested. Well, you won't be arrested, but you, you, you've been banned from the property, basically. It doesn't matter. But basically what would happen is with all these alternative platforms is when you first show up to the site, they let you do whatever you want, wherever you want, because they because nobody knows who they are. So they're just trying to even somebody could be the biggest wignat, could be the biggest far right leaning person, far left, far right, you know, fascist, absolute fascist. I don't want to use the, you know, certain words because how sensitive YouTube's algorithm is. But it used to be that with these third parties, used to be with these third parties that it used to be you know well what happened though is if like like in the case of BitChute is BitChute got so popular that countries started to become aware of them and that's when things change because then they start cur curtailing the site to what the countries want it's no longer what the the niche users want I mean, they they would let people put on whatever they wanted about Hitler, you know, if they were if they felt that he was right, and they they would just just let them do whatever they wanted. So, so, you know, but but so but now because they they don't want to be considered illegal in a particular country, because even any country, even Germany, you know, that they wanted to be in that market, so they're willing to start censoring, start censoring, start banning, and it, it, and ultimately in the end, it just ruins the reputation of the site. The site becomes kind of a lie because, you know, and I, and I kind of, I was kind of suspicious of BitChute from the beginning. I think uh, what was actually happening, you know, and now I'll talk about BitChute because I'm not quite there yet, but I'm trying to play catch up here because we're going to be talking for about five hours <laughs> if we keep this up, so. I know you're trying to, trying to, kind of sum this up. It's really hard to sum up ten years. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's very hard to sum up ten years in such a fast time. Basically, basically what it is is with Vidme. I I got super ambitious. Like I at first I started just doing some like random videos, maybe like walking in the woods and, you know, doing some ASMR, or doing some like these tiny little videos. And then all of a sudden, right out of the blue, uh, right, right out of the, the freaking blue, um, uh, right out of the blue, um, I don't know. I just, I, I finally thought about, you know, I'm going to upload these old Freighter versus Retro shows, you know, the, the crazy little mouthy, little sweary kind of stuff I used to do. And mind you, we, we really can't do that kind of show. <laughs> well, I've changed, you know, because of Christianity and, you know, my own deep spiritual belief. I can't I can't throw off those efforts sometimes. And if look, I'll be honest, if you hear a swear word, it was kind of, it's just accidental. It's almost like a segue, you know, like I'll say a word like kind of off the cuff and it just kind of happened. But in reality, you know, I don't, like, pur purposely try to say that, you know. <clears throat> and, um, wait a second. So, you know, and I started 
developing this whole new series that was supposed to be based on 52 episodes. So, because, you know, because DC I was doing that whole 52 episode, 52 issues or something. Yeah, I never really, like, bothered to read that. You know, there's omnibuses that collect that. <laughs> but, you know, like, I don't know, maybe I should get an omnibus of that just to see if that was any good or anything. But the point of what, what I'm trying to say to you is, that the whole point was is to do the new freighter versus retro a, a freighter versus retro that was designed entirely for a whole new site and uh so i i started working on the episodes with the idea that in 2018 this is this all this began in the summer 2017 not 2018 so i'm working on this show you know and i'm doing different jobs and stuff and working on the show, but at the same time, I was working on, but on the summer, you know, I was releasing the episodes of Late Night Vidme. I know, that was a fun show me and Graves had, you know. It was a very fun show, very funny. I actually very much revere those shows. And in fact, I think tonight, there's an old one I'm playing on YouTube. So, um, it's still keep, I... You know, but we're going to be talking about this because this VidMe era is a problem to me. It's a huge problem because there's so much about it I love, but there's a lot of creativity I, I unleashed during that time I love. But man, I'll tell you, as far as how to go forward from that was impossible because what happened was, Okay, so I, I finished about 42 episodes, not 52. Because around that time, you know, I was getting in some issues with equipment. I was, like, mostly doing things out of a car because I was just trying to find time outside of work to record all this. I would do it, like, on, like, a Saturday morning. I would take go down to the lake and bring all my equipment and run this off the car battery and just i would have a fun time i would be recording for hours it was so fun but but as a result you know eventually you know i was starting to have equipment problems and you know issues with you know we were, we, that's where you get the joke in the late night bit me are you like are you doing the show out of a po pontiac <laughs> it's like yeah yeah it was all done out of a pontiac it's actually quite memorable but the late night Vidme stuff, I'm glad I didn't hold that stuff back because, you know, that got to be on the show. And we had some normal viewers. It wasn't like big numbers or anything, but, it, you know, we had at least a good 10 people a night, you know, that would watch an episode. And I don't care. I, 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 I'm happy with anything. I mean, if I see three people may have checked out a video, I don't care. You know, I, you know, it's because like, it's like you said, you know, it's. He's, most of the time, this stuff is just in our own hearts, you know? It's like, I remember it, you know? It was my movie, you know? But so I did that, but then I got further. I, I kind of said, well, how about instead of 52 episodes? And Because the, the episodes were getting longer because I, I started to do these FMV videos where, like, I we would watch, like, a whole FMV and stuff. And, and those those were really funny, but you know already i was getting kind of burned out with that and i that's when i made the freighter versus retro movie and it was all aimed for 2018 an entire year scheduled in advance and you can schedule it now i know you can say it, but can't you do that in youtube you can now like about the last year or two i've done this yeah but for when i try to think back then i couldn't remember if you could do that but sometimes it would bug out. I think pe some people had problems where they would schedule an episode and sometimes it just appeared. It doesn't do that anymore. I mean, I'm telling you, I, I literally schedule stuff. I've been scheduling for the last year or so, and, you know, and stuff has been going through. So I have a fairly, fairly active channel. So, so what happened was I did these 42 episodes and I did the movie 
Yeah, the movie was a lot of fun. I, I loved it. Um, I, I think it told some really fun storytelling. So, yeah, so what happened was, you know, in the original Freighter vs. Retro, it was just, the, I don't really think there was much story, really. It was just a silly podcast with, like, you know, um, talking about the games, and we started to do the whole Cracked in Ohio, Ohio thing, and, and uh, you know, with Pooh Guppy Adams and all that, and we started to have these little stories, and but it wasn't like crazy. But at the same time, you have to remember I grew up with Star Wars. And Force Awakens had just been out in theaters. So I, I kind of wanted to do a parody. I wanted to do a parody of it with the with us. You know, the Big Four. And Peter Graves. And Gregory Peck. And, you know, and Pooh Guppy. And me. And it's like, you know, so, so we were going to go ahead and abandon the 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 traditional original freighter versus retro for this new freighter versus retro and I, I i have to say i think the only downside with this whole thing was is i just got too ambitious with it <laughs> just, yeah i think the problem was is you need to go back to simplicity i think there was some times when i did i, I did i just would have like the the gameplay i wouldn't have all the sketches and the the, the voiceovers and stuff but the, for the most part this is just what we do it is, this is always what we do. We're doing it right now. I mean, this is basically just a table talk. This is not a podcast, table talk podcast. This is not like a, you know, uh, anything else. But basically with VidMe, we, uh, so, okay, so basically I'm getting towards November. I, I remember putting out like a, a, a turkey day, a Thanksgiving day, uh, Late night vid me with just the, all the episodes up to that point. That was fun. It was a good blockbuster of just me and Graves and Pugapi. It was just all fun. Yeah, it was. It was really a lot of fun. Then, uh, then of course that was when you get the. Uh, I was uploading. Um, you know, I started to have Ole Anderson. I started to really have fun with that. And, but then, you know, it, you know, still have about maybe another two months before. The debut of the new Freighter versus Retro, and it was going to appear, and you know we were going to start doing that and watch that whole space opera thing come off, and and uh, then Vidme shut down, and it basically gave everybody about a month to pull all their stuff off or or to continuously upload, and so basically what ended up happening is all the instead of a full year of the new freighter versus retro it became a full three weeks <laughs> of every single 42 episode being uploaded because it was sort of like just throw it all in including the movie and yeah there were some people who really liked some of that stuff but you know it was sad because you know you know all that stuff had to come out now it had to because you know you know otherwise i would just have to i don't know yeah, I, it was a sad thing, you know. We did the 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 VidMe shutting down episode, and it, it it's funny how it even affects us in twenty twenty two. It it is, you know. But you know, we we're taking a risk, you know. Like, well, I shouldn't really get into it now. We we need to finish that era off before we can explain our movie and explain everything. So I did the Freighter versus Retro movie. So basically, what happened was you had the movie, you have a whole se se season, and you don't have a platform. <laughs> you don't have a platform. So I first started, and it's sad. I first started to put on YouTube, and there was just no views, just no views. I'm like, oh, you know, because you, you, I'm telling you, to go from ten views to nothing is just it's it's abysmal. It's depressing. And, and then at the time, my thought was, what's the point of doing this? And I didn't even bother to upload any more than that. So, and then, of course, then there is BitChute. And then here we, we're going. We're getting into multiple different platforms. So I upload, start uploading to BitChute. And, and there's just no one commenting. There's just, there's really... 
there's views, but it's, it's just, it's just kind of dead. It's just like, I, I felt like BitChute was like a refugee camp. Like I never felt, we, I never felt that, that our stuff had any kind of culture on there at all. Like Vidme did. And heck, I think we, we're, we're doing better on YouTube than we would, uh, we have more potential on YouTube. That's the one thing. And, uh, you know, and it's all about algorithm. So you do actually have a viral video, though, on uh, YouTube. Yeah, about uh, Garrett Kirchway uh, exposing Benny Hinn. <laughs> yeah, is it that, that video actually is intense. You, you you got some... That's actually... I think once I looked up Benny Hinn, and you, that video actually is in the top ten. That's intense, man. It's very intense. And so... <sighs> So, yeah, so basically there's no more VidMe. So you have this whole series, you have this whole season, you have a movie, and you don't have any place. I'm putting it everywhere. I'm putting it on DTube. I'm putting it on BitChute. You know, and understand, I was doing some BitChute even before the big refugee thing happened. So, But understand, I just made, I tried so hard on air to, to make, make it big, and it just never worked out, never panned out. And then what it is, is a peer-to-peer -peer site. So what it is, is the more people share and more people like your videos, the more it, it stays up. Like David McCullough has stuff that goes back to the beginning of BitChute. He has stuff that's the beginning of BitChute. And it's you can play his first video, but you need to understand, there's lots of people who have gone to, to, to uh, BitChute. And because they don't have that backup, that peer-to-peer -peer backup from all the multiple users liking their stuff and maybe even downloading videos or whatever, it those videos just don't work. Those older videos just stop working. I hate to tell you this, Gregory Peck, most of our videos on our channel at BitChute now don't work. And I've had to literally start like a second channel and just upload like the most essential episodes. And actually, essentially, at first, they wouldn't even let me upload the Freighter vs. Retro movie because they they thought it was some kind of piracy or something like that. I was trying to bootleg a, someone's movie, and it's like, it's my movie. <laughs> Just because, so I had to keep changing the name of it. And it was horrible. But, you know, over, over at YouTube, I don't have any props. I, I've had, I, I'll tell you the truth about it. You know, like right now, now we're starting to get to the modern day. I spent practically almost 20 minutes here. Almost a half hour talking about the past history of Freighter vs. Retro. And you have to. It's 10 years. You have to talk about it all. So the new Freighter vs. Retro has been kind of a virus. It's been a thing, you know, that we have to get over. We have to get over the continuity of it. It doesn't help when you don't have anybody watching it. So you have to constantly keep explaining it because whems all of a sudden, some did become viral and all of a sudden people do notice it. Sometimes after, sometimes that can happen on the internet. Maybe maybe someone had been totally unknown. All of a sudden they become big. Somebody referenced them or something. So, so then, you know, so with Freighter versus Retro, um, so, you know, we're back on YouTube and I know in the past, you know, I, you know, I had, you know, I had you got, I had you, Gregory and Peter, you know, I, you, you tried yourselves to go to other sites that we won't talk about. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, I, I went to a real Bush League one once. It was like PewTube. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was a. It was a very racist website. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think what we, we were trying to do is just try to give put a little light in there, you know, like not not be racist, just have good fun comedy and entertainment. And it was, you know, and I would make other accounts on there just to to pump in like Art Bell and fun shows and UFO shows and 
it was fun, but it just let it was it wasn't gonna go to anything, and it didn't. And uh, and, that, and that's when I started to really realize, you know, that all all these like alternative platforms don't lead to anywhere but censorship. They don't start that way. They they can't start. That way, you started. If you started a site that way, like day one, you would have no one be there. You, what they do is they kind of catfish everybody. They they get everybody to, you know, like oh, you know, like oh, uh, you're 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 a uh, fascist. That's that's fine. That's fine. I mean, we're open minded here, you know. But then all of a sudden, you know, as the site actually gets popular. And then all of a sudden they're like, whoa, we're not into that at all. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're right. You're right, France. You're right, England. You're right, Germany. We'll, oh, my God, they're racist. We, 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 will, we will ban anybody who's like that. And then it's, it's like I, I, used, I got on bit shoots. I, I actually got I had heat with bit shoot on Twitter because I was saying about these racist videos and they were just trying to, they try to make us say, you know, tr show some picture of Noam Chomsky about, you know, freedom and how you have to allow people who are wrong on your platform. And well, then they look like hypocrites years later. So I was in the right about them. Sometimes I just have hunches about people. I've noticed that you do have hunches and I test people. So, and I, I came to the conclusion when I came back to YouTube, I just said, this is, this is it. You know, everyone, you, we're either going to have to um, just make a platform. We're going to have to find ways to make do with Facebook. And I, I don't want to do Twitter, though, because they're just too, afraid or too sensitive. I know you do have an account on there that does absolutely just fine. But, well... I changed a lot when I made that one, you know, and, but I don't have, like, I have a band account. I do actually have a band account on there that, you know, cause I was just promoting my books like crazy and they, they called it spam and eventually they just gave me a permanent suspension, you know, like Pooh Guppy Adams. <laughs> yeah, you got the permanent suspension. <laughs> hey, it'll end someday. <laughs> I guess it does end if you like go and go and like like apologize and beg to them and stuff and I I that I no no I'm like totally anti-social I would just sit there and just be like okay it is it, gone who cares I wasn't making any money on that anyways it's all bots anyways Twitter is mostly bots mostly people following and unfollowing and you know, and there's never ever like any reason why you ever find out why they unfollowed you. It's just like they just unfollowed you. So, like I was saying about once I got back to YouTube, you know, and th this current situation that happened where I'm self-employed is now I can work on this stuff full time. So, then ultimately what happened is I started working on... Um, I started working on the Freighter, Freighter SH Night Show. Um, Misty Forest Bible Ministries has come back. I did the entire book of Genesis. Well, Freighter, you did the entire book of Genesis? Your throat must have been killing you. I did the entire thing in one, one, one pretty much 24 hours. Oh, wow, that's, a, that's some work. That's a lot of work. And so I was doing that. I was starting, you know, while I was doing my last job, I was actually starting to do some of the files, the audio files for the, the new Freighter, Freighter SH movie. But in this situation, you know, I've been going absolutely full gun ho on it. So we didn't talk about now we are now we're in the, 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 you know, the mainstream here. We're now caught up, you know, talking about a good half hour about the past. And so... But understand, we can't go forward until we get the new Freighter vs. Retro finished. And so what it is, is, you know, we're, we're kind of getting to the core question that is on both of our minds. Like, was there ever an intention for a sequel? And the intention is, I think in the back of my head, I, 
because I, I Last Jedi hadn't come out yet, and I liked the idea of doing like a a bitter freighter, like a, a freighter is like Luke Skywalker who was just all bitter. And, and I know people hate Last Jedi. It's our most hated Star Wars movie ever made. It, it is. But there was something there that could make a really fun parody. And so I was like kind of excited about that. I think I may have was even trying to do it a little bit with the first movie. But I think with the first movie, I was just trying to... Like I was actually trying to almost make it, it be a parody of Force Awakens. But being like what Force Awakens should have been. Which is Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Chewbacca, and Leia all back together. And that's you know what what uh, basically they failed at happen but understand that you know there are elements of last year that i actually do like but i, I kind of wish it was in a, a different movie it wasn't with the, the characters we all love you know we don't want these characters to be uh you know turned into something like this so nonetheless like i'm saying is you know that uh um yeah so you know yeah i mean i mean for crying out loud i mean it's uh horrible to just uh i kind of lost my train of thought <laughs> uh yeah i mean so but i think what it was is i i made Especially as I finished up wrapping up Freighters, the new Freighter versus Retro, the motion picture, the idea that that movie could basically begin and end. Meaning, so, like, for example, I had you, Gregor Peck, go off to be a crab fisherman. I had Gregor, you know, Peter Graves go on to biography. I had myself, you know. You know, at the time, I, I was actually was about to get a job, a special job, and I, I was just kind of, kind of cluing in a certain kind of employment I was about to do, or potentially. Truth is, I probably could have ended up not getting that job, but I did actually get a job down there, at the place I was looking at, and so then Pooh Guppy, you know, I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think Pugapi, I think at the time, was going to do the car garage thing and then uh, uh, be the postmaster or something. Yeah, we, we keep changing his jobs. We keep changing his jobs. It's absolutely funny. And uh, this new movie, I'm going to give a little teaser that basically there is a new job, a new business based on my final job I did recently that it, this is like like kind of a way to <laughs> totally make fun of it you know because you know I'm just sort of to say is you know he has a new business and it's absolutely hilarious but so f the decision to f do this is to to end it's to end the new freighter versus retro you know, to finally put an end to that. But but it's f sad because at the time, I when I look back at it, New Freighter vs. Retro should have been something that really should have been a hit. It should have been on Vidme, though. It should, you know, then then we could have maybe looked at, you know, going elsewhere. But I like the idea of keeping on Vidme. But it it just didn't work. It just didn't work out. So. So then ultimately what happened was, you know, with YouTube, we. Um, so for the new Freighter versus Retro movie, the idea is to kill off the the big four, to kill off, you know, the Freighter SH kill off Gregory Peck, kill off Pooh Guppy Adams and Peter Graves. And then these two new characters, um, Billy and Glenn, which I understand I have gotten better at figuring out where their characters should be or what they should be. When I first did them in the movie, 
they used to just repeat the same lines. Because honestly, I couldn't really think as a writer what to do with them. And sometimes it takes years until you actually figure out, they're, they're a lot better, trust me. Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're ready by that point. Um, a lot of the footage coming out, that's going to be good gameplay and stuff. So what is the end game? The end game is of this is that the original four are killed off. They're just killed off. And then what happens is, in the end, will be the debut of a brand new show. So it's kind of like a Phoenix Rising kind of deal. With, uh, you know, that there's the end of the old and now. And actually what what the new show is, is actually two shows. It will actually be a show for Billy and Glenn. And it will be a show for us, which is the original Freighter, Freighter versus Retro. And... The, the, the idea which you wrote down for that is actually quite quite fascinating you you what you got is a show that doesn't take place now it takes place entirely in 2011 so it's it's a groundhog's day effect and so what it is is the the four the big four are trapped in 2011 but they just keep playing the same games over and over and you have to understand the games that came out between 2006 and 2011 were perfect games you can do show after show on just dragon age origins i know yeah i mean even dragon age 2 isn't really well it's not as good but it Compared to something 10 years later, I mean, you know, it, it's unbelievable how bad the gaming industry's gone. Uh, but you can, you can, you can do something like this and make it based, make a show based entirely on this. So your idea, and the thing is, is really, this is probably what you wanted to do in the beginning, but you just didn't have, it, it, I didn't have the equipment, didn't have the internet. The internet wasn't caught up to the speeds of the internet of, to, of today. Um, that Xbox Series X I have, I can. What I can do is I can go on Twitch through the through the video game system, broadcast whatever game I'm playing, and understand I have tons of Xbox 360 games, tons. Pretty much most. I have most 360 big, th big time 360 games. I don't have Arkham City. I should probably try to get that one. But what I have is, is I got um, practically everything. And so, what you can do is you can have, you you can broadcast live the game you're gonna do. But then you go into the video editor and you can record it into your computer. Wow. Right? Wow. So instead of, the, you know, remember when we did New Forever Retro, I was doing everything with thumb drives. I don't have to do that ever again. Never again have to do that. And, and don't get me wrong, that was a way to, that was a cool option to do that. So. So, so pretty much, that's the way to do it. So you said you would like Billy and Glenn to have a show. What's that? It's going to be called Farfinger Gaming. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny little title. And uh, you know we've we're going to have a new villain. I originally I was going to just have Dark Milo be the villain for them, but I don't think so. I think that I kind of made the decision by the end of. The movie, and I know I, I'm spoiling a lot because I really don't think many people are gonna watch this. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just we already know what happens in our own movie. Yeah, so yeah, so the idea is you just 
except for Billy and Glenn and the new villain, everyone else is just killed off. And it's just it, because the idea is the new for, for, new Freya versus Retro has to come to an end. It has to. So and it, it, it breaks off. Billy and Glenn are the only remnant of the new Freighter versus Retro. The uh, new show, or I should say the original, the original Freighter versus Retro, the thing that's great about it is I will have half the show be NES games. And I take OBS, I record an emulator of my Nintendo on my computer, or Genesis, or I can even do Sega CD. Are you gonna do Sega CD? Yeah, yeah. I actually do have footage, so I, I could I could utilize that if I wanted to. So, so basically, you can do that, and then um, and then and then. You know, then after you play that, you know, probably what I'm going to do is I'll do I'll do the commentary of that by myself. And then the last half is a, an Xbox 360 game, and that's where we all four go at it. You know, that's how about the Power Glove Congress? Um, I will probably will do a section of that, but. I think I have to plan that out a little more because I have to plan it out because of figuring out, you know, what we're going to do, you know, if, uh, what we're going to do with, uh, I would have to find old news from 2011. So, like, like we we're having a podcast, you know. We probably what we'll we can do is we'll talk about a game, and then we'll uh, you know just you know yeah that's what you can do yeah. So, like, so way things are going is, so the new freighter show will kind of just take things. You know what it it really it is it's a reboot, and uh, see Gregory what it's gonna do is is take the show back to something it should have been. But because of all these problems with tech and uh, equipment, not a, in the, in the, I didn't ever have a capture card, never had a capture card. Even to the day in 2022, I still don't have a capture card. The, uh, the fact that I can do all this on my Xbox is amazing. I think it's wonderful. Unfortunately, unfortunately... You know, I couldn't have done it back then, but you know what? We can, you know what? I don't, I don't care. I can, I can use imagination. And I, we can just say it is 2011 in a show, and we'll just say we're, we're doing this now. <laughs> we're doing this now, and we're, we're, so really, when you think about it, so when you say you broadcast, you say, oh, we broadcast on Justin TV the other day. <laughs> That's exactly how it would work. Yep. Yeah. The, Actually, Twitch, I think Twitch first started in 2011. Because Skyrim was playing... It, it, Skyrim never appeared on Justin TV. It was, uh, it was uh, when it was, you know, people were playing it on Twitch at the time. So, Twitch started around 2011. So, it, it, oh no, it actually did. But it took a long time before uh, Justin TV was totally, totally eliminated. They they separated the gaming because of copyright issues and also the fact that they were struggling to keep Justin TV uh, performing well. So because of all the League of Legends and all the stuff that was really like traffic, the tra internet traffic was just rocking the site every freaking weekend. So so they then they made a whole new site in, with the idea to dedicate it to that to, to that stuff but you know the point i'm trying to say is about the new freighter versus retro and you know i was just taking a little break there you know of course a lot of times when i pause something you never know i took a break or something but you know uh, uh, i was in the kitchen there you know and i made the realization 
is that you would say, well, why has the new Freighter versus Retro been very controversial? It's because it's actually keeping me right now from putting out any new episodes for at least until the end of 22. Ah, it's really, really become kind of a, a problem. The problem is, is, is finding a steady home for it. It's, it's like, like I told you, Bitshoot, I thought maybe that will be its steady home. And it isn't because there's not enough traffic to keep the peer-to-peer -to, -peer to keep the videos working. I can go to literally the first episode I ever uploaded there and it won't work. So we got a problem that means that our content doesn't even exist anywhere else. So what has happened is really since... Uh, I would say I've been uh, uploading now steadily both the uh, late night vidme, the, you know, the, the the late night Mr. Pack show, and uh, I've been uploading steadily the fr new Freighter versus Retro with the idea eventually the movie will be out. And I had to change the movie because I really had copyrighted stuff in it. So I, I replaced the copyrighted stuff for... Um, I replaced it with just video game footage, you know, and it's not quite as good, but, it, you know, whatever, whatever. It just gets the same story through. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's all you can do. I mean, that's what you got. So, so really, you know, it's probably mad because I got to get that stuff put on here first. So I think the way I see it is like October the 20s, October 22, is when finally the, the last thing is comes out for the whole Freighter versus Retro and that last movie or last whatever. And so then what would ha come out after that? So is there not going to be like a, a mini a mini series or something that ties it all together? Well, the movie ties it together. So what would happen is, it wouldn't be like, the, then bam, the movie, new movie is just out. No, it would be like, it would be teaser first. I just recorded the audio for that. This, this long t talk, long podcast is a, and then what would come out next is an interview. It would be those hilarious, uh, Interviews was we we did with each cast member, you know. Oh, those were really funny last time. Oh yeah, they some of my favorites are actually from the, those those moments, because it just allows each character to shine in their own comedic way. So, but there'll be more of those this time. So basically, what happens is by December twenty. Second, that's in 2022. That's when you finally have the final freighter come out. So, the final freighter, I've kind of decided, yeah, I have really got to see how long. I mean, freighter, first off, your, your motion picture was like five hours long. <laughs> I know. It's because I had that Dracula Unleashed Let's Play put in there. Because it's it's one of my I have to say out of my top five games it is one of the strangest games and it's like in it's in my top five because it's just such a weird game but at the time it was like a detective game and it it was like I always wanted something like that and it, it, I loved it and I was so bad at it but I loved the game because I used to like go to the newsstand I used to go to the the London pubs and. It felt like an open world game in a weird way for an FMV. I don't think it was meant to be kind of like that, but I think they were kind of trying to make an open world game in a way. You know, I mean, it's not Castlevania, you know, Simon's Quest or something, but it's, I don't know, I liked it. I just really liked it. And so, you know, in the time, yes, I do admit that I wasn't, Playing that footage, that was a let's play I found because I wanted to not have some ten hour gameplay. I wanted just you know a, a, a total speed run 
that gets through the whole thing and it just shows it in the movies just to show this game. I, I really like this game. So, so, you know, so basically, that's the objective. The objective is, is to kind of get over the thin meters. <laughs> And then we can start fresh, you know, and kind of pretend like nothing happened. And that's kind of the whole point of it. The final freighter is to actually get to a state of nothingness. It's just, to, it's just a, yeah, it's just to get back to what what it was about was just we we had it lucky in 2011 because really the 360 games were so good. Fortunately, no two worlds. We can never ever. They never came, that never came out for backwards compatibility, um, uh, Gregory Peck. It never did. That's terrible. I, you know, but I, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of games. I, I, there are some games I have that never did. They never did come out as backwards compatible. So, you know, that's the way it is. You know, but, you know, there will be times where we, you know, and really, I'll be honest with you, that there may be times where maybe we do an episode that isn't just an hour. Maybe we are a half hour or something. Maybe we can do some much longer just because we're having a fun time at it. So, you know, it's less about storyline. And you know what? The only reason why we did the storylines with New Freighter versus Retro is because I don't know. I, I don't know if I was into the games yet or or I wasn't entirely sure, you know, what what I could do yet. I do yet as far as like open an open world game, you know, with uh game footage and stuff. Although I have to admit that was probably the closest we got to actually looking like a modern gaming show. Like yeah, I know, that was like the closest we ever got. Yeah. So. Well, there's really not much more to talk about. I mean, uh, the show, the show just focuses on trying to wipe out these old characters, but it it'll do some other things like reveal different secrets about the universe they're in and that weren't in the original. The original. Was there any time where you felt there was, like, loose ends for the original motion picture movie? You know, when I was working the last job, like, I had a few thoughts like that in between some moments when things weren't busy. Like, I was kind of going, was there any moment where maybe, like, I, like, I, you know, mostly no? There, I do admit there was a point where I, I kind of thought that actually Billy sh shouldn't exist because because if you remember the end of that movie, Greg Peck, we decided that, you know, Billy said, well, the Empire and Dark Milo didn't exist. Okay, so he did that. They don't exist anymore. But if they made a time breach weapon, which was Billy, so Billy shouldn't have existed anymore. He should have just vanished. Yeah, you think about that, that and, and actually, great, like, I thought about it, and I realized what, what could have actually happened was, is, um, is that, um, what could have actually happened was, is you could have had, like, this movie sequel after that, where Guy Fart, where, uh, uh, Glenn Farfinger, you know, he's all by himself, and he's, you know, he's angry, and he's mad, because he doesn't have his Billy anymore, his, his best friend, and, oh, yeah, like, you know, he's like a Dark Avenger, or some Batman, or something, <laughs> you know, you know, like, like, try to set things up that way, but, no, you know, I, I just decided that Billy and Glenn were inseparable, and they were just kind of all, like, a, a Gears and Keeler, Lake, Lake Wobegon kind of characters, and that that, that really are 
or uh, Larry Daryl and Daryl or, you know, what, from the Phil Hartman show, you know, that they were never meant to be uh, goofballs. They, they, I mean, they're goofballs, but they're never meant to be dark characters. You know, yeah, I know what you're talking about for your... So, you know, so you talk about loose ends and yeah, so there, that's a loose end. And I... I ultimately came to the conclusion of not caring. And sometimes that, you can do that with a comedy. You can not have to take things that seriously. So I did that. Then another loose end, of course, was... The, the reality was is these four characters that are supposed to be from here, our dimension, are stuck in some dimension created by Dark Milo. Well, you kind of kept changing it, even like the last second. Yeah, well, basically the new villain ends up in the end of the movie. You know, and I know I'm spoiling the movie because, number one, I know no one's going to watch it. <laughs> watch this. It'll, it'll pay off better, like, afterwards. Like, when people come back, they, they can come back and listen to this. And it's like, yeah, we spoil some major parts because... We know you people aren't going to watch this whole podcast and me talking to Gregory Peck and, you know, about this movie, you know. We can spoil some things, like that there's a new villain and that basically, that basically you're going to find out some truths about Milo and you're going to learn some facts about the whole universe and, you know, that, you know, basically I, yeah, I kept changing things right to the very end, you know, like. Originally, you know, you know, I had the Dark Milo was going to be somebody that came from the the year of 2011. But the reality is, is I, by the end of it, I kind of decided now that he, that he was actually created by somebody. And that person is actually going to be the real villain for Billy and Glenn. So that way of just ending that, because then when the new show starts up, then there's just no, there is no, and in fact, that's the thing is that they, they ultimately go with. It, it kind of reminds me in The Last Jedi. In the Last Jedi. You know, like, uh, was there anything sacred in The Last Jedi? Like, they just, like, killed everything. It was a very frustrating movie. I, I think I loved the chaos of it. Because it was very quite clear we had a rogue director. <laughs> he was a rogue director because he didn't leave anything for um, Kathleen Kennedy and uh, whoever was going to direct the next movie. They fired the guy who was supposed to do the next movie, The, the Rise of Skywalker, or, or whatever they were planning to name it. That movie went under a lot of changes. I'm even now hearing that there might be like they're refilming it or something. Like, <laughs> like, oh come on! Just I know, like, just admit it. Like, Rise of Skywalker is that like that's it. Just admit it. That's that's what we got. And it, but you know what? Yeah, if there's a whole other movie they filmed during the time, maybe yeah, they should release it. But it's just kind of humiliating. This is just to show that, you know, that... And, of course, they're going to release it because they did... There's apparently a Zack Snyder Justice League. Right? There's a just Zack Ryder Justice League. And I don't know what's different about that. And you, you would have the time to actually watch that and see what the difference is, Freighter. I actually have to agree with you on that. But... Now I'm tempted to go on Google Video and buy it. <laughs> so, so yeah, so basically, when you talk about loose ends, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, how how did I start, you know, we were talking about Last Jedi, because that's really what the parody is about, and so, yeah, so we should talk about Last Jedi as much as possible, because that's really what, and Last Jedi, you know, first off, before Last Jedi started, you have three villains, 
you know, Kylo Ren, you have Snoke, you have um, the general. You know, you have you have like a, a general, and he was actually no, you had four villains, four villains. You had a uh, um, oh, you had the one with the stor silver stormtrooper helmet and stuff, and yeah, I I remember that. I thought that character was cool. Yeah, she was really cool, and she was in uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, you know, she was a really cool character. And then you had, um, you know, the the character who basically played like the the head major, you know, and he, and actually in Force Awakens, his character was pretty cool and pretty sadistic, and and that was supposed to be the whole point. Is you you had these four characters, and you know, Kylo Ren's your emo type, and he, he's actually a total wreck you know and that was the thing about him he was just a total wreck so so let's look at what last jedi did here okay so then uh, and then you have ray you have luke skywalker you have you know so by the end of the movie kylo ren you know he, he he's a total wreck he, he he wasn't killed off but humiliated by Luke Skywalker and you know and you know he, he basically he he ends up becoming the supreme leader in the end cuz he killed off Snoke Snoke was the big shocker but, but see the, what you will find out later is there was supposed to be basically like a palpatine character in the next movie the third movie but what it was is they they came to the realization they were afraid that the audiences they were afraid to do a whole new villain for the third movie that's why they went why um what's his name there um yeah why he went with palpatine because he just wanted a character everyone recognized and, and so what happened was then he kills off you know the the stormtrooper looking character that was really cool no that character was dead he, he killed that character dead this rogue director i like how you don't even bother to remember the director's name like he because lily uh i don't really care to remember his name because he was he he made a movie look i'll admit it you know there there's a part of me that kind of likes that movie but it is an absolute cluster it is an absolute mess of a movie. And I really feel like... I felt that movie would actually be a good movie if it didn't involve the Star Wars franchise. Like, if you just made characters from scratch. So you could have had, like, a an old character who was a hero at one point, but he, he just became bitter. and You know, and he, he, he'd screwed up really bad and... He wasn't taking things well, but but then they make you know Luke Skywalker that, and that's you, you know it'd be you know it's like what they did to Optimus Prime in the Transformers movie. You know, it's sort of like what what are you what were you thinking? You know, it's just bad business decisions, and so you know really we should talk about Last Jedi because that's what our parody is based on. So. Because I, I really strongly felt I would I, I actually wanted to do it, but then when Vinny shut down, then I just totally forgot about it. Because I thought that first movie kind of I thought it, it it solved all the issues, but then I can't sort of come to realization. I started to realize, you know, you got these four characters that were brought to this dimension. They don't even know, and they never ever left it. You know, and it's like oh, so. They're still here, so you know you know you could focus on them trying to escape. Freighter isn't willing to help them, you know. And so you got this issue with Freighter, and or you're just spoiled more. I I know I'm not very good at this. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry. No one's gonna watch this podcast, so you can just uh, you can kind of not have to worry about that. So again, about Last Jedi. Last Jedi like killed off of, like all the villains except for the only two it didn't kill off was Kylo Ren and uh, that that one general, that one major. 
but what they did to him instead that it, it, like they killed his character instead of him being like a a scary character who's you know you know like a a rommel or a, a goring type character they turned him into a comedy character a total doofus comedy character that you know gets swung around and gets pranked on and like uh again you know again you destroyed his character because apparently the way he was in force awakens he he was meant to be extremely intimidating and and absolutely evil uh, really authoritarian you know he would probably fit in more with uh with uh Chao Ching, you know, he would be more like him, you know, like he just an absolute tyrant, you know. But they, then they turned him into a freaking comedy, Jar Jar Binks, uh, Jerry Lewis comedy character. So then by the third movie, you know, uh, Abrams, I'm sorry, it's Abrams. When he, he they had him do the third movie, he had no choice but to keep him in, as, a, as a doofus, you know, because... You know, there was only so much Abrams could fix from The Last Jedi. They they try, I guess they try to fix a lot of things. So the, the third movie was more of a reaction to Last Jedi trying to fix everything. You know, they'd had Luke as a Force ghost trying to essentially band-aid the entire series. So, you know, it's really, there's, there's a point where, Really, I even, will even say it about this movie. Really, you know, I know you, you're going to probably ask the question, Gregory Packer. Right, well, can I ask it? You go ahead and ask it. Will there be a movie after Dish? Originally, the intention was is maybe there was supposed to be kind of like a third movie, but, it, you know, obviously it doesn't include us. It only would be Billy and Glenn. And I did make the new villain for kind of in that intention but but ultimately um but ultimately uh I don't I think I I just don't think there's enough there. I think we'll we'll just go ahead and make this the last movie and then we'll move to our the new shows and we'll just do things that way. Okay, uh, well, is there anything more for you? Is that it? Yeah, that's that's it. Just a good round table to catch, you know, to really touch base about uh, the last 10 years. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard because really the reality is is this show is a history of f failure, really. It's a, it is a history of failure because it's you know, st we were on Blip TV that failed. We we tried to start on YouTube originally. Like, literally, the pilot for Freighter vs. Retro was on here. It was on here back in, like, 2011, 2010. And, uh, maybe 2011, maybe. 2011, 2010. And it just, just didn't go anywhere. It just it, it just didn't get any attention whatsoever, no views whatsoever. So I just kind of I didn't really keep with it. I mean, that was the way it was back then because it was hard to work at a full time job and do this. It was really difficult. So then you know, really with YouTube, it was a failed platform too because because at the time I was kind of like well everything we're putting on here isn't really getting any attention then and then you know bit shoot that was a disaster don't forget too you we might as well add to this conversation library what happened with library library was just uh, a library was pretty much just an external hard drive i mean it's a great place to store stuff almost like a a cloud it's almost like saving things to a cloud. It is actually pretty good for that. And I think it's still good for that. Um, now, it's been relatively replaced by a system called Odyssey. And believe it or not, anything new 
added to um, anything new added to uh, um, YouTube gets automatically uploaded to Odyssey so but the problem is with Odyssey is that stuff doesn't even show up on their front page unless you've developed enough followers and stuff. They want you basically to draw people in from social social media. So, uh, um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's it. Sounds like kind of like a scam just to try to. Yeah, well, it, it, what it is is it makes you do the work. Like you, you, they, that way they don't have to go out and try to find people to go to the site. It makes you work to get the, your stuff on the front page. Like in the old days, like in Bitme, and look, even BitChute, when you upload a new video, it would appear in a new section. So you always had, you can be literally a zero Andy and start building up viewerships and followers and all that kind of stuff now now and honestly no you you really i don't even really know you know i haven't really been checking on odyssey so i mean my odyssey would probably be now fairly as active because it's all linked to my youtube so but as far as library library there's no nobody goes on library to find content and watch content it's not like YouTube and it, it, no one goes on there to chat or comment For, pretty much it's just this why I said I said Gregory Peck it's why I said it's a uh, external hard drive well yeah I mean it's a history of failed platforms you know yeah history of just never finding a place to put all this so for now and i'm sorry to say man we gotta stick on youtube and you know maybe some things aren't going to be liked some things will just go down just fine and so far so good stuff they don't seem to i don't seem to get community guideline strikes or anything so i guess i guess it's it's okay it's kosher <laughs> so knock on wood just keep doing it so well that's it well, well folks uh, go see the the new freighters each movie uh called uh, the final freighter coming out at the end of the year